Party got Isekai into another world, fought Team at level one, and died. So sessions canceled. Welcome to uh, whatever this is, the sessions canceled podcast. I'm your host with the most, uh, Grogzak Brackard, Percy Glaxon, that guy in the corner. Hey, you over there. Uh, mostly people call me Matt. <laughs> what is up? I, I'm here. I with- really like how you could tell that you were reading your own Discord username. For that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I- <laughs> This has gotten just, this has gotten more and more chaotic every time. Every time. Morky. But I'm here with uh, the boys, as always, and with uh, Mr. Josh. I, yes, I am also here contemplating why Matt referenced the 80s D&D cartoon. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Isaiah. What's up? <laughs> and Mr. Sam, back from the war. We pulled him out. We got him. I don't know if I like being called Mr. But <laughs> hi. It do be like that. I've been called Mr. for a couple quite a while. It's it's kind of weird. Yeah, I don't know. I uh, prefer when they use my work title, you know, in my my name, but that uh, Sergeant Mr. Master is weird. Major Chief Commander. That is that is in fact a military rank. Yes. Yeah, Josh, General Admiral Gold Star. Star. Lightning Bolt. <laughs> I just I just kept saying words. I figure one of them is the first sergeant isn't I, I don't know. I'm, yeah, Captain. one of the words was sergeant. Okay, yeah, very close. so we're good. <laughs> yeah, Actually, he started. Seven. He, he, you threw in, um, uh, you threw army terms in there. Corporal uh, is not that's... air force. And I don't you know threw the commissioned wait, officers. Oh, wait, <laughs> which is isn't very your, different. Isn't your technical rank first sergeant? Isn't that it? And no, I'll... first sergeant is a position, not a rank. Ah. Hmm. But uh, yeah, before uh, before we get Matt's into like, our I'm episode just today, all that. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's like, I'm uh, moving on. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, anyways, Josh, uh, you have uh, have some words for the viewers before we begin. I got some words for you, pal. Listen here, Matt. We're throwing down right now. I'm coming to your house. I'm at your front door. I'm knocking on the door. I'm coming with a bat. Mm-hmm. This isn't very WWE of you, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, if it was WWE. I'd be coming with a chair. Uh, uh, no, you, you didn't even have your theme music play. Come That's on. That's true. I didn't have my theme. I have to pay. And his name was. Wrong. I do need to find theme music. <laughs> uh, before I find my theme music, though, beautiful reminder. If you like the stupid chaos you're hearing right now, which I, you probably don't. But if you do, give us hit the follow and or subscribe button on the platform you're listening on. That'd be nice. All right, Matt, back to you. Give us the play by play on the first down. But uh, today, gentlemen, because uh, me and Isaiah, we had our own villains episode. Now that we got the full squad back, I want to do villains to electric boogaloo back to back. The revenge and sing. I want to talk about bad guys because they're, they're, they're fun. It's good to talk about. It's cool. Villain, villains cool. Villain gear rising revengeance. That's right. I. But there was no. an attempt. Yeah. yeah. It worked. No, I don't think you will. <laughs> no, it worked. I <laughs> no, uh, I think Brett, it worked. Uh, mm. Yeah, Brett will give us. He's just like the final no. verdict on that. Just, just stains the time in the bed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, I, I know. Uh, I don't know if Sam or Josh, if you got a chance to listen to the episode me and Isaiah had, it, it was good. Good, good talk. I mean, yes, because I have but to I listen want... to all of them, so I listened to it when it came out. Do I remember anything? No, not really. Sick. I probably but, wouldn't remember anything either if I listened to it. I'm going to be honest. The episodes that I do listen to, I don't remember. And we recorded mm-hmm. them, so I've heard them twice. <laughs> yeah. and, you know? Mm. But what are your just, you know, general thoughts on, like, you know, bad guys in particular? It doesn't have to be tabletop related yet, but just, like, were you much like me, like, growing up and, you know, watching Disney movies and being, like, yeah, I like the bad guys. They're cool. And then the villain obviously explodes or dies. You're like, whoops. What are my uh, thoughts on bad guys? Yeah, I, bad guys. I don't even know how to answer I, <laughs> They're bad guys. I don't. Bad guys bad. I, I don't. I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I like Digimon villains. <laughs> yeah. I, I like Digimon villains. I don't even know how to respond to that I answer. I, okay. I, like, well, okay. I, so, oh, all, right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Same, right, right, right. I guess. <laughs> I guess. Like, okay. So, 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 like, adventure one, let's ignore because that's literally like Tihi on the Saturday morning villain. Um, <laughs> okay. Whereas. 
fucking Adventure 2 is just like, hey, I'm also a kid and I I just hate everyone. Like, I fucking hate everything and everyone and I'm realizing that I'm being manipulated by adults or adult Dig Digimon, whatever. Hey, I think it, I think plot twist, it was actually my oldest mon all along. That, that was Adventure 1. Was that still Adventure? Oh, right. My I forgot they mon was the end of... Um, season 2. Yeah, I... I keep differentiating between one. season one and season two, even though they're technically the same. Yeah, period. so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's 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 the yeah yeah the series yeah yeah, yeah 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 okay so season series two season three with the weird goopy thing and my boy Beelzebub everyone's favorite so edgy that's that's tamer Matt. wait what fuck. <laughs> 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 no, I'm confused. I'm <laughs> this is either going to be an amazing bit or this is fucking great, I guess. <laughs> no. No, yeah. Videos of the one that rides the motorcycle, has the leather jacket. That's Tamers. I don't okay, remember evolves, enough Digimon. Digivolves from Mon. I remember too much. I was gonna say I, I, I don't remember enough to, to counter I, and or I, back I up saw, this argument. To, to, also, to, to date this I, to date this fucking conversation in this episode, um, I saw a tweet recently that's that literally was like, "What's a conversation start like thing that someone can talk to you about and you will just not shut the fuck up about?" I was just like Digimon. Okay. <laughs> Gonna say copious amounts of anime. I was gonna say you have yeah. a couple of them that you could go Metal about Gear. Saying. Why? Are, okay, it's been, what is happening? We've been talking. About oh, because I was talking about Digimon villains. I okay, <laughs> because like for it's it's that thing where it's like oh it's a kids show and it's like oh this is real fucked up and dark. <laughs> like I mean, these villains have somewhat okay motivations, but they're also just fucking evil. End of the first series movie, like a which what was it? What was the it, what was the I evil one that was the virus mom. yeah the one that was gonna set off a nuclear reactor literally going like, to no, no 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 launch nukes oh is that what it was they were gonna launch nukes yes and cause world war three like good times bro, that is think. some evil on a next level face <laughs> like I, I, I listen you know you can have your cults and shit in in, in D, &D I, I, you know that's fine what about the virus that's gonna set off the nukes <laughs> Picture this, a whole group of mind flayers that just want to activate magical arcane foci that will erupt and blow up your planet. You have to stop them. There you go. Free campaign for everybody to use. You're welcome. You're welcome. It does actually. <laughs> I'm. I don't even know where we are anymore. Yeah. Talk about villains. I, 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 I know, but like, <laughs> there's, well, so, uh, there's a lot going to, on there. I, I not Matt, to steal the hot. Well, I was, I was just gonna say, Matt. I don't even know. You're, I know I usually clown on you for having uh, general broad questions, but that question was genuinely so broad, I did not know how to answer it. So I just, I'm, I, just, like, I'm not even, I'm not even memeing. I actually didn't know how to answer that one. <laughs> so uh, that's why ahead, I kind of latched onto the first series that I thought yeah. of. That's kind of uh, what I was ooh, hoping for, honestly. The first thing, Gundam like villains too. Yeah, like, like <laughs> when when war. I war is bad guys. Yeah, war is bad. Like when I say like a bad guy <laughs> or a villain, what's the first thing that comes to your mind, Josh? Um, I mean anything. I mean, right now, I guess because of recency bias, Thanos pops into my brain. But I don't. Okay, that's, that, that, that oh, doesn't. I of Gaston. That doesn't really mean anything. I don't like. I, I mean, I like Thanos, but I'm not like I'm not like super into him. He just popped into my brain. I, I mean, it's still I, a good example. Uh, he's an okay. Example. There's some Wait, good, some, I, get, some good, some bad. When I think a villain, I, I now that I've got, I just think fucking that, that one. Tw I know this, this. Like, how do you, how's this villains? Huh? That's hold on. Huh? The the post that was like, if you're on Twitter and you see someone's profile picture is Shar Aznable from Gundam and it's him <laughs> doing something cool, not trustworthy yeah. whatsoever. <laughs> that person is a villain. If their if their profile picture is Shar Aznable being a fucking idiot, trustworthy it takes from that one right there. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I remember that. I All right, that one. it's a good take. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to think of a villain I really, really like. Uh, I mean. This is going to be one of those things where I can't think of it, and then someone's going to offhandly mention something. It's going to, I'm going to scream emergent yeah. in 20 minutes. That's, <laughs> <all>. <laughs> That's basically what's going to happen. Uh, I guess, gentlemen, because uh, whatever. I, I, Isaiah, what were you going to say before, though? Yeah. Oh, what I think about a villain? Uh, 
I don't think I have like one specific villain that comes to mind, but whenever I think of villains, I think of like uh, the, the the talk that I had with at last time I did this, which is like, what kind of villains do I like, right? Because you can pretty much separate it into like the two separates, right? Or, 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 or let's we'll put like we'll call it like three main categories. You have like the deep complex villain, the uh, you know the I'm evil because I want to be evil. I'm Lex Luthor, mm-hmm. or I'm an Asian of chaos. Fuck the rules. I like setting fires. Yes, yeah, much like uh, the three uh, line. No, um, <laughs> I guess yeah. Yeah, I mean, kind of. Uh, although, yeah, I guess it'd be like lawful. No, we're not doing that. We're ignoring what Matt <laughs> said. There. We're not going down. I, Isaiah, I like your description better. Lex Luthor better. is no, lawful. No, no we're, we're not doing three. it. We're not doing it. I more Refuse. often than not, I actually don't like full-on agent of chaos villains. I I think they're. For the most part pretty boring because it's just sort of seems like a my dad's cooler than your dad contest but doing fucked up shit so you're mm-hmm. not you're not a kefka fan no no okay no kefka had a master plan kefka would like he came off as i'm evil because i want to set fires but he was just playing the really long game and he was like i'm just evil. really long game and you're like oh the length of a jrpg long game yeah yeah i so i true, i liked kefka true. less when he first got like when, when you know when he first shows up in six yeah six six mm-hmm. and then at the end when he's like and i will put all my evil plans into motion it's like kefka you already won it's like no no that was phase one. you're like Wait, what you're a god now what, what do you mean that was phase one that was the you whole know, that was the thing right he's like no that was a step of stone, motherfucker. Oops. You know, it's funny. Ooh, speaking of final <laughs> speaking of Final Fantasy, uh, two villains I really like. One of them that you would maybe not expect as much. One you would expect. Um, I really like Arden in Final Fantasy 15. Uh there was a, there's a lot of holes in him in his character in terms of or not even not even his character. There's a lot of holes in like the writing of 15 because it's sort of an unfinished and or chopped well, together narrative. But it's the, a chopped together narrative, yeah, I would say, because they got books in anime and all that. But the ending <laughs> and the way it played out, I liked a lot in 15. Um, but well, another villain, payoff. it was good, very good payoff. But another villain who like, I mean, obviously we can't even argue with uh, Emmett Selk is like, duh. I I don't, like yeah, yeah, in they're, terms they're of villains, really good. Emmett Selk is like grade A villain for a multitude of reasons. I mean, oh, fucking so good. I won't go off <laughs> about that. I won't go off on the Emmett, Emmett fanboy club, but I will let you know I'm in that club. I, I, I mean, yeah, I, I, <laughs> let it be said. I, I do like complicated villains. I think there are interesting stories they can tell, but there's this thing that's been going on recently. Or you can't just let motherfuckers be evil. They they have to yeah. be evil, but there needs to be like a deep, complicated reason why they were evil. I was like, what if I just Whoa. like? Yeah. So you're right. Yeah, everyone wants to write the morally gray villain these days, and I get right. it. But there is definitely an argument to be made for the like, I'm evil because I'm evil. I like, character hey. for sure. Like <laughs> sundown, yeah. like sundowner and Metal Gear Rising. Yeah, exactly. I or, <laughs> uh, Armstrong too. Armstrong is just fucking evil. Yeah. He just wants to do bad. Like, okay. he's like I, well, I, he he does nefarious deeds. Like, all right. So actually, here's the to, thing. to like take a new thing, the new uh, Puss in Boots movie, Jack Horner. Steve, that guy. That guy's just fucking evil. He's just uh, evil. Just evil. Unequivocally evil. He, and it shows he's basically and it's fucking Zenos. great. He's like I had everything I wanted growing up. Oh, My family Zenos was great, great to me. I just want to be evil. And you're Zeno, like, Zeno's another good Final Fantasy villain. <laughs> yeah, you just look at go. Fair enough. I mean, mm-hmm. so I will say, though, uh, Armstrong's a little weird. He's sort of evil for the sake of it, but he does also have some like, I think I'm doing the right thing energy because he's a politician and he's sort of gaslighting I, himself into thinking I'm, it's a good I'm idea. Not, I'm not I'm not going to get into the whole politics thing. Well, no, what I mean, is like him, him being a politician is what makes him think he has a good argument, right? Like it's sort of his. Uh, it's how he justifies himself via politics. My sources, I made it the fuck up. But yeah, well, so I do yeah. want to. There's another thing I want to mention. So Armstrong's an eleventh hour villain. Y'all know what that means, yes? Yeah. Okay. Well, Matt, you know what that one means. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming that's like you know, a villain who only shows up at the end. His plans at the end, and basically you have to stop him before the world blows up or some shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sort of uh, an eleventh hour. Yeah, kind of an eleventh hour villain is just a villain who shows up at the very end and you mm-hmm. haven't seen at all up until that point and but yeah. they were like 
secretly Mastermind behind the everything, thing. the whole thing, yeah. usually. Armstrong is straight up an 11th hour villain. Uh, he literally rocks up in quite literally the last hour of the game. Mm -hmm. um, and yet everyone really loves him, and I really love him. But most <laughs> of the time, I fucking hate 11th hour villains. They make me oh, for so sure. mad. Excellent well, example. I mean, fuck you, Far Cry 3. <laughs> I, okay, so yeah. like the, the big yeah. reason why 11th hour villains usually suck is because they're usually not likable. They're just, hello, I am the all powerful god, blah, 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 blah. Hell, yeah. Punch, punch, punch. Yeah. You know, like that's usually how they're handled. Where mm -hmm. Armstrong is like, one, he's a very relatable person because, especially in places like America, You've where kind we have of met very, an Armstrong in your life. <laughs> you yeah. probably met an Armstrong or you've seen an Armstrong <laughs> on TV. So you already have this idea and you're like, oh, I get it. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, you like, know. Whereas, you know, yeah. And the Final Fantasy IV, it's kind of like, oh, 11th hour villain, why? Doesn't Nine I mean, have that too? Nine has it even worse because it's yeah. literally the final boss. I've heard literally I, just shows uh, up listen okay and you know what the worst part is it's not that hard of a fight i have also heard that I, yeah uh, so okay i don't know i i, I kind of will come up to bat for nine in one major way which is it is it's an 11th hour villain it doesn't revolve the, around the theme of it, the game it this does go on oh, sorry no I, I that that's pretty much what i was gonna say it just revolves around the theme of you know life and yeah. choosing for yourself like it, it makes sense and but it, it just feels more like a victory lap than every anything right, else it's because like an it's epilogue not, boss kind of because well, it's not hard yeah like if it, it and especially because like the way that it's set up and i'm not going to talk about it in, in such a way because i think final fantasy 9 has a great narrative up until up until that like point. Uh, well so Kind of, because the problem with Nine's writing uh, is that the character arcs end way too quickly for certain characters, so they just kind of exist oh, yeah. after a certain point. Um, and at the end, because, you know, it, it's Zidane's story, uh, up until the end, you know, you, 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 you know, it, it, it's still Zidane's story. You're still learning about him. You're still, you know, there's, there's all these plot twists and relevancy. Like, you basically get your fucking ass kicked. Um, right before the final boss by the final boss essentially <laughs> and you're like oh this is gonna be a hard fight and you know it's not like it's just i don't know it's, it it feels underwhelming yeah final just, fantasy just really actually is. has a bit of it there's quite a few final fantasy games that have kind of awkward 11th hour villains um and i really really want to talk about 14 but i don't want to spoil endwalker but sam you know what i'm talking about there's endwalker did it in such a fashion that it's pretty good. I just I, I right? so the the, you know? the, the so the problem that I have with saying that the last boss is an eleventh hour villain is that kind of is and kind of isn't. Kind of is and kind of isn't, yeah, especially I know. because That's my point. <laughs> one one we've known the character for a while, and two, it's an MMO, so the expansion style system doesn't like really. True. But also, there really there was... flow with that very much because it's like, oh, you know, we haven't known this character for very long, bro. We've been playing this game for eight fucking years. You can't know that character for that long if they were introduced I mean, this yes. expansion. I will say too, though, the thing that about Endwalker is, it, it's sort of an eleventh hour villain, but at the same time, it sort of isn't because there was build up. We just didn't mm -hmm. know it was build up until after. <laughs> And then you look As back well. and you go, oh, it was pointing at the hole oh, is a lot. Of, look, there's a lot of big brain plays in Endwalker that ended up working out whether they were planned ahead of time or not. I got no clue, but they worked out pretty well. I mean, there were some things that I was like, yeah, there's a couple you, things that come been, a little fast. Been, well, there are a few things that are like really on the nose. Yeah, like you're introduced to something very early in the expansion and you're like, wow, I can't wait for this to be relevant. Yeah, um, some other things that aren't. Um, yeah, thirteen kind of has kind of as a eleventh hour villain because you don't really find out what the fuck's going on until very late in the game. You're just like, yeah, fuck the government. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> up until well, you're you you figure out other things. I feel like thirteen has a weird eleventh hour villain because the last game is one eleventh hour villain that like true, very true. I, but what uh, the fuck is that? Lord. What the fuck is the villain's name? And they're basically God. Yeah. What's what's her name? But you oh, have no idea. 
Um, oh, I, I remember I hated it. F thirteen. I didn't the, play thirteen. Oh, was it B? I didn't. Final boss lady. F thirteen. Three. Final boss. That's funny. Final Fantasy ten. Oh, of- uh, Buna Velza. Okay. The fuck. I, yeah, I, 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 yeah, it's a dumb name. Um. Real quick, I just wanted to, to come up to, to bat for nine because it, it did something that I really like. And I really I actually just realized like yesterday or, or Monday that I really liked it because it had the same thing happened in a 40K uh, novel I was reading. Oh, uh, it's the oh, God, you set it free villain. Mm. Oh, because that's that's what nine Fair. is, right? It's like you fight the villain who you thought it was the villain the whole time. And then the villain sets the actual final villain free. And he goes, wait. Mm-hmm. Wait, that's what happens? And you go, oh, you're a fucking idiot, aren't you? And then he goes, oh, mm-hmm. oh no. So I actually, I really do like that because it, that one's kind of a cheat, right? Because it doesn't really need to feel earned as much because they kind of were talking about like, uh, like, you know, they, they called it like the great chaos, I think, in, um, in nine. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, you know, we have to beware the great chaos or with the great nemesis, whatever the fuck it was called. They kind of threw hints at like, you know, there is this like all powerful evil in the world that you have to like avoid at all costs. And then the villain sets it free. And then he was like, oh, oh, you were being literal. And they went, what did you think we were being? And he was like, metaphorical. And he's like, what? why would you like, just no. assume things? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, one of the Tales games did the same thing. I th- Vesteria? So, but here's or, the like, thing, Isaiah, that's kind of you. You you are sort of nudging and hinting at it. I think that's really the, the trick is nudge it. Cause like you could sort of make the argument that Vecna and critical role is an 11th hour villain, but the whole way up until they get, not the whole way, but for a lot of the campaign up until that point, you know, Matt Mercer's kind of like hint, hint, nudge, nudge, this other yeah, guy's he, doing the thing. Fore- foreshadowing. It's, yeah. it's a great, you know, writer's tool, you know, tool for DMs to use. I, I think as uh, I don't like 11th hour villains, but if you're going to do it, you, yeah, some foreshadowing on your 11th hour villain would be nice. Just, yeah. just, just some fan. I know something. that there's something. an 11th hour villain. Yeah. Again, Not... don't do Far Cry 3. Yeah, don't, don't, don't fuck do that. Um, fuck all I just, that. <laughs> oh my God. I want to talk about this so bad. Okay. Mm-hmm. You boy, none of you are going to read this, but maybe Matt, Sam might. So spoilers, mm-hmm. Sam. Oh, okay. <laughs> Actually, no, I told you in a text. We're good. Uh, spoilers <laughs> to any of our, our listeners. So there's a whole thing in, in yep. the book I'm reading. It's the book on, on the Necrons, the, the good old Robo Skelly boys. <laughs> and they go to this planet. And the movie, For those the book who don't place, know, oh, this is Warhammer nonsense. Yeah, this is Warhammer 40k. Uh, the main mm-hmm, characters uh, are Trazen, the infinite, a.k.a. the Pokemon master. Love and so uh, Oregon, the, the guy who can like turn back time at will. And the the book they're takes such place. Good bros. Yeah, such, yeah, such good book. <laughs> they are they are best enemies. Um, <laughs> and the book bu- the book takes place over the course of of uh and uh, eleven thousand five hundred years. What? And the uh, the whole time they're on this planet and they're trying to steal like a map, or, like a secret treasure. But they find out is like an ancient like the the, the Necrons are basically and so like we're gonna call him a pharaoh. And like, oh, we got to find this Pharaoh guy because he might be the secret to, to turning us back into not robot people. And the whole time, like throughout the chapters, you hear like the song of Serenade. Serenade's the name of the planet they're on. And then you find out at the end that the song of Serenade was a distress. Like it was a distress signal that was saying, don't come to Serenade. Bad shit is here. And then the whole time you're like, well, what's there? Is it the flare virus, which is like a weird uh, virus that infects the Necrons and makes them go crazy is a de- the Destroyer Plague, which is another virus they have that turns them into like crazy nihilists. And it turns out, no, it's a Catan. It's like an intact Catan shard, which was like their their evil gods that they destroyed m- millions of years before. Yep. And when they open it, uh, before they open it, uh, uh, Orokin, the future seer dude, is like, don't open that door. There is a disease and an evil in that door. Don't. Oh, I know I wanted to open it, but now I know. I don't know what's in there, but I know it's like the end of everything. If you open this fucking door, please. And then he gets his ass kicked because he's not fighting back. And then when Trazen opens the door and it's a Catan and he goes, I fucked oh, no. up. I fucked up real bad. They 
there's a part <laughs> where it, so when I say that that Trazen has Pokeballs, I mean it. He literally has like demi planes in like small pyramids that he throws at people, and he's just like Pokeball. You're mine now. Uh, and they were like, "We need an army, Trazen. What do we do?" And he's like, "Is that an army? <laughs> I brought five. And he literally throws orcs, Eldar, other fucking uh. Necrons, a T Rex. Uh, <laughs> I'm not kidding." Yes. He throws a T-Rex at it in the middle of the fight and everyone stops what they're doing. Even the aliens. And they're just like, hey, yo, is that a fucking T-Rex? Wild. <laughs> and they just go back to fighting again. Like Trace him. The best bit. You're like, Trace him, where did you get a fucking T-Rex? <laughs> Apparently on about. that planet 10,000 years ago. <laughs> I, was like, say, I got like, these shits a, when they were in stock. That's a lot of time. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's is great, but yeah, just the the oh god, you woke it up. I love that trope. I don't know why. It's not a particularly clever trope either. No, not really. <laughs> I just really like it because it's like it, it's the shit where the villain who's been so cocky the whole time is like, what have I done? And then mm. the villain, the, the fucking protagonist, is doing the the Nick Cage like raised eyebrow face. I think <laughs> being I, like dumbass. If 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 I were to if I were to go to bat for that trope because you know i mean every trope exists because something about it is useful for some reason right like yeah you don't get a trope if there's not some sort of writing usage for it i think the uh, the the fun utility of that one is oh god you woke it up gives you a really easy justification for why every hero from across the dimensions has out no all now shown up to do their super big fuck you energy giga chat attack all at once and also to have no moral quandaries about it right like yeah you know like it, it's the avengers endgame Just, scene justification <laughs> like I, I know i'm using marvel again but like oh, you I, know, can, you, I can use something else you don't <laughs> you can't have every you can, it's hard to justify why every single superhero who's ever met each other even for two seconds would show up but if there's the giant universe ending threat uh well <laughs> you know <laughs> And also you can beat it up and no one has to feel bad about it. Although there's that's a little different because Thanos is like a character character as opposed to like an evil entity. But if you make it like an evil dimensional, extra dimensional entity, you just you just everyone can just beat the shit out of him. Nobody has to feel bad. You could do your big super mega Kamehameha and you just you just roast the shit out of dude. Nobody has to feel I bad. Mean, it's the they, same they critical did. role in Vecna, right? They did the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they did kind of do it in Marvel, right? With Kang. Because it was like, oh, I'm not. I'm the good Kang. And he gets fucking domed and then he's like oh no you woke up and he disappears and they went well, what yeah uh, so yeah they did I mean they did kind of do it so uh, yeah I think that's the utility of it is like a good excuse for everyone to go fucking buck wild and have no moral quandaries about going fucking buck wild Sam you had another you had another you're gonna mention it's fate related. I don't know if you want me to. <laughs> Shock, I mean, was it, was it Tiamat? Was it when they woke up Tiamat? Uh, no, it's actually the end of chapter one. Like, I mean, literally when, every when single. It means nothing to me, but okay. Uh, what well, you mean I'm, when they were like, when, uh, what the fuck is that loser? I was like, I've been a whole time. No, 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 no. Like, 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 oh, I guess I should say part one. Um, at the end enough. of part one. Oh, with uh, we, we've, yeah. yeah. Yeah, all, 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 all the servants come around and they're like, hey, uh, you know, we, we formed such a good bond here that we could just summon ourselves for reasons. Don't worry about it. Uh, it's well, okay. Yes. <laughs> and then each of them do their super attack and get punted halfway across the planet. <laughs> literally at, at one point. A character does literally get punted and they just yeah. disappear. And you're like, what? No, that was okay. You okay? <laughs> that was a lot of time. We just spent on on a trope that I initially started the conversation with saying I don't like. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, weird how Fine. that happens. Right? Yeah, we had a lot of thoughts. We had a lot of things. We had a lot of yeah. examples. Don't do eleven hour villains in your game though. Unless, uh, it, unless it's oh god, you woke it up. <laughs> yeah, that's kind well, of a that's kind of a, like a kind of kind of allude to it. Like you know, there's yeah. a thing like 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 okay, all right, all right. For for example, you you tell your players it's a good thing that they're doing. And then the villain goes, "What the fuck is wrong with you, yeah, people?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it turns right. You, yeah, it turns out the villain destroyed the entire village because he had to for the sake of the entire world or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 
and then yeah. and then oh fuck you woke it up yeah yeah you woke it up and it's like oh it's a, you know it's supposed to be a savior actually it's Trask. oh Oops. you know what game did that it's really well with rocket the rocket launchers yeah. Yeah. you know what game did that really well what? shadow of the colossus mm. because oh, yeah. you are the villain you are the villain yeah. straight yeah. up you Spoilers. are the bad guy Spoilers for that game, I guess I mean, it's, bro, that game it's, is ancient it's, Yeah I, It's not ancient, but it's at least 15 it's old. years old So like it's old. Uh, give me a second But yes, you <laughs> are literally the villain in Shadow Colossus Then you don't know it Yeah, yeah and when you When you when You you are the thing that they wake up <laughs> When is. you become it And the good guys went, oh god, he's the thing that they that woke up And then you go <laughs> No fire well, I've already gone this far. Decades old. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. So the, your, your character literally goes, "Well, I've, I've been evil this far, I guess." I mean, the I'm other thing, well, the well, no, you're, thing you're that's really, at that point. I know, I know. The other thing that's really good about Shadow of the Colossus is, despite it being a game with not a lot of dialogue uh, and not a lot of explanation, you get the sense as you're playing it, like you're doing this to save your girlfriend, wife? Question mark. Um, hmm. But like the whole time as you play through the game, at a certain point, you start getting the sense you're like, I don't. This might be a bad. Am I the bad guy? I might be doing the bad guy thing. I mean, the biggest the biggest indicator of this is that until you attack them, they don't do anything. Colossi do not do anything. You also like the fact that you die every time when you kill one of them. You're like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm, And also the fact that they're like. They seem real sad <laughs> when you beat yeah. the fuck out of them. Yeah. Well, it's oh, also, yeah. like, wait a you minute. You go back to them and they're like covered in sand. And yeah. like, <laughs> well, you're like, oh. Well, you know what else is crazy? They only start attacking you after you show signs of corruption is they know that what, yes. like, they're like, oh, yeah. it's Dorman. Mm-hmm. Gotta fuck his ass up. Yeah, because that's like, well, yeah. why are they, now they, why are they attacking me? Oh, because I have these weird black veins all over me. Yeah, I forget mm-hmm. which no. number of Colossus it is, but at a certain point, they do start to attack you on site. Yeah. Yeah, that fucking be man. Sick. Something around there, I think. Yeah, but, yo, Shadow Class is fucking. You want to tell a really minimal story? That's expert way to do it. Mm-hmm. And you want your villain to be. Uh, the other thing about Shadow Classes is the villain is basically there the entire game. <laughs> you just don't know. He's helping you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, this this nice god man is helping this me nice kill these things. Voice. What could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what could go wrong? I, I don't see any problems. I love spooky with this. voice in the sky. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, y'all y'all just listen uh, to the giant booming voice that comes yeah, yeah. to you when you go to a shrine with a sword and everything. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like saying I'll grant your wish as long as you go kill these twelve dudes for me. Like, like, yeah, like seems, damn, seems boy, fine. That's that's easy. And then and then your wish does come true, you just become a baby. Yeah, you're like, well, I got what I wanted, but not in the way that I wanted. And uh, man, this sucks. All right, uh, what's your favorite Colossus fight? Oh, fuck. For me, it's the um, bird. The bird's the cool fight. Uh, oh, I don't know. I never I can tell you which one's the watched. most. I can tell you which one's the most terrifying fight. Is, is, it, the it, one, the is it the eel? The eel? The eel in the water? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man, if I, I like that. It wasn't even a question. Absolutely. It was like, is it the fucking eel? Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, Yo. <laughs> Um, um, so Matt, let me let Matt let me set you a scene, right? You're in no, no, I've seen I've seen it. I've oh, seen I, like, I, I've never played Shadow of the Colossus, but I've watched like playthroughs and, oh, God, and watched the eel my buddies play. Is so okay, so, so you've yeah, seen so the eel I, I know the eel fight is is fun. All right, dear so listeners, fucked. imagine this, if you will, a small underwater grotto lake thing, right? And you're like, oh, okay, that's fine. There's like a nice god beam coming down through the hole, and then you're like, oh well, it's in the water, right? Okay, it's fine. And then you get in the water and you see this little little glowing light come up. And then two more lights come up and you're like, what the fuck is that? Oh, it's a horn. Oh, those are its eyes. Oh, how deep is the? Oh, it's like 60 feet long. Uh, no. Okay. No. Basically, <laughs> basically, if you're one of those people that has like a fear of the water, just nah, don't even. <laughs> no, dude, don't do it, bud. <laughs> like if you're yeah, one of those people that has like a fear of like sharks way under the water and shit like that. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. It's like it's. Now I've I've speedrun this game and I think the f- the most fun one is the um uh, the sky snake. Sky snake is oh, pretty cool. Yeah. Phalanx, I love that one. Yeah, that that one's really fun. Uh, e- eel, however, is the worst. Yeah. Just just like straight up because the underwater <sighs> shit really bothers. And and the other water one. There's two water There's two ones. Water and they're both, ones. Yeah, they're both bad. They're both pretty um, bad. One because you have to control the 
the second one with like its fucking head teeth or whatever. I'm trying, um, I don't know. Yeah. The eel is just annoying. Oh, if I have like a, f- I just <laughs> the, the I also bit? like beard man. Not the beard first one. Good. Oh no no no, be- no beard man's the one in, in the fucking temple with the underground. Yeah, that guy yeah. sucks. Yeah, because you have to climb the wall and he can break the wall down so you can fail state the level and you have to die. Oh, um, need to actually go the, back and beat. The bird was great for me. It's called Avion oh, there's the because power. when it dive bombs you, you have to jump onto its wing and then it flies straight up and it like the way it's they animated feeling. your character, huh? I said it's a good feeling. Yeah, yeah. That one's like, also kind of terrifying though. <laughs> It is, yeah, but like when you're holding on, and especially in the remake, when you can see the G force on your character, and it's like the fur is like almost flat down onto its body, and your character's legs are fucking dangling <laughs> for your life, yeah. and you're like, "This is terror," but this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't mean. Yeah, bring us back, please. So, um, <laughs> don't. Yeah, it's like, no, I didn't play it. this game, so I have no opinions. <laughs> No, I mean, I've, I again, I've, I've watched a lot of playthrough. Yeah, good, good, look cool, look cool. Very good. I, it, it's definitely a game where you have to kind of play it to get the feeling of it. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. I understand. It, it's, it's, it's one a master of those. Class. No, one hundred percent. Some people will be like, "Ah, the gameplay's bad," and I'm like, "Um, You're wrong." But okay. Maybe just, Incorrect. maybe just don't be bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't be bad. Uh, it like, sound like a skill issue to me, it, but it is, yeah. it is absolutely <laughs> a very different game in terms of control scheme. Other than you know, you use the left thumbstick to climb or mm. whatever. Like it, it definitely feels like your character is just a fucking schmuck <laughs> with the way that the controls are. Yeah, but like it's not bad. Like you can master those controls pretty easily. Like I've done the speed runs. Um, the eel is called Hydras. I mean, that's surprising. Uh, yeah. I, you know what it is? Their names it, are all pretty on the nose. It, you know what it is? It's the meme where it's someone's like, I played Shadow of the Colossus. Open the gates. The gameplay sucked. Shut the gates. Shut the gates. Yeah. <laughs> Mainly it was the horse sections. Open the gates. A little bit. A little. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A little bit. But uh, I guess to try and bring this back in some sort of tabletop with 1T uh, RPG podcast of sorts. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, we've all we're all we're all dungeon masters, game masters, storytellers, Never whatever the hell you want to call. Hmm. Um. I, what do you guys? So like, I, I'm gonna ask a couple of random, like a couple are questions. Sunday's just fever dreams. Yes. <laughs> yeah, some, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Some questions from uh, the episode that me and Isaiah asked. Uh, a couple I I found because I do want to ask you guys in general. Um. Because like Sam, you you mostly run like modules. Like Josh, you've run a bunch of different systems. Isaiah, you're currently doing a big ass campaign. I've done. I'm also doing a big ass kit. What? <laughs> well, I'm saying I'm just I'm just picking one specific thing for everybody. Sir. Okay. But you know where you guys start off when it comes to like a villain, like your villain, or making a villain, or um, like damn specifically, I know with like Avernus, like she's on the cover. <laughs> of the book <laughs> i mean with modules usually the villain is right front and center i think the only one that i know of that doesn't is storm king thunder yeah yeah oh, uh, oh. So she's technically on the on the cover uh Not? Storm king's thunder yeah 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 that's that guy's dude. technically that's on the book. big ass beard that, no, um, that's like there's more there's more giants on the cover oh, i didn't yeah. yeah but like you don't know that matt no you don't Spoilers. I <laughs> yeah, but if you don't, what, what Sam's saying is not knowing that it makes it kind of not. It, it don't hit. You just, it don't hit the same. Literally, right, you right. see Storm no, King I, Thunder. I and you're like, just, oh, that's the it's the Storm it's the King. Big guy. He, he's the villain. Yeah. He's the it's the big guy. It's not the big like, guy. That's though. what you think. You don't, you don't you don't think Descent to Ed, er, Avernus. I almost said Avernus. I I need help. Ooh. Um, I'll that's what I named Uranus. our um. What I named the game in Roll Twenty Avernus. <laughs> <Stop. laughs> <laughs> um but like you know you, at least with the um modules you know it's, it's kind of harder to tell who the villain is specifically because it's like oh you know like okay with Chris Estrada it's like but it is, this, this this module has been out since ages right. ago like you yeah. can't can't hide that from me yeah not, um, not to spoil too much but uh the new Dragonlance book uh with lord soth on the cover i wonder if he's the bad guy 
Who knows? I, isn't he not the bad guy? Probably. He's one one of them? Question oh, mark. No, I don't I, know. I thought, I'm assuming. I, I I don't think he is actually. Oh, is he just there? No, I think it's that other dude. Remember the guy with the buffed, uh, the jacked arms? I think it might be him or Duke. No, you know, remember that was a D and D Beyond specific like freebie they gave out after. He's, oh yeah, he's a, thought, he's the bad guy in the first. I don't know. Dragonlance. Never mind. I'm talking out my ass. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, yeah. but I'm, I'm like you know, the bad guy being on the cover. Soth is on the cover. He's not the bad guy I, of the the Dragonlance adventure. I I'll thought be I remember somebody saying he isn't for some reason, but I don't. know. Sorry, Sam. Keep, uh, keep going. Uh, my point is, is that, you know, when when in, with, with modules specifically, you either have to try to give uh, the villain a little bit more flair or you. Yeah, pizzazz, or you <laughs> have to like. Just really ham it up. I, like, I, I don't know how else, because like a lot of the times, you know who the villain is going into a module. Mm. Like, it's kind of hard not to know unless you are, you know, like living under a metaphorical rock uh because like especially if you're going to curse of strahd and you're like oh, the villain is not strahd yes it's the uh <laughs> I, it's it's the, like, it's the the excuse me it's the fucking mega mind meme or what's the difference between a villain and a super villain presentation presentation yeah no, yes yeah. pretty much <laughs> it's, it's literally that so like you know at, at that point it's playing the villain to their like just a massive amount of like their strengths or you know making the situation just fucking dire for your players mm-hmm. sassy can do that yes <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much good that's gonna do you but yes sassy straw uh or sad straw he's <laughs> so sad I um I don't. Can I phone a friend? I don't. <laughs> I mean, because like, you ran a couple of like, uh, I actually wanted to ask you, what made you decide when you were running the Star Wars game? Why did you pick the first order? For, like the bad guys? Like what? What kind of drove you to picking them as your main um, as, like the antagonist for that game? Because that, that's an interesting thing, especially nowadays with right, whatever you they were the current most recent Star Wars villains fresh mm-hmm. in my mind. We've had the Empire for a long time, so I was like, let's do a slightly different thing. But also, I just wanted to... It was less about the First Order and more about wanting to to play out the interlude between Episode 6 and 7, because at the time mm-hmm. that we played, there wasn't that much information about what happened between the two. There's a lot more now. Yeah. Um, so, like, I wanted to play out the interlude, but, you know, it, it's, it's Star Wars. Star Wars, you, 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 you kind of have to have sort of comically over the top like villain thing going on you know like star wars does the thing where like the the you know the empire or something along those lines there's like a there's like a villainous order that's really like over the top and then there's one character within that that's like the villain you actually give a shit about so you know there's always at least a darth vader or your dark nihilus or your fucking uh uh shit what's his name in the first kotor yeah. game uh, uh well who's the blue uh, guy general Malgus. Frog? Malgus, darth Malgus. yeah there's always like there's always the main guy who you actually care about and then the like silly goobers around him so like i don't know it, star wars i didn't malik? put a lot of thought into it you mean? huh no yeah, sorry, yeah malik yeah that's malik? fucking is that what it is yeah, yeah, malik. No, malgus is the is the one that the random human being trucks with a combat knife yeah yeah malik. yeah I, I i was like yeah that's that's from that's from the old republic yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh yeah, and, oh and so uh, basically there wasn't a lot of thought put to it. <laughs> mm. It wasn't. Uh. Or what about your current game? Like, what made you decide the? Uh, 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 what are they called again? The the ooze people. They're not, they're not ooze people, but I'm calling them ooze people. I mean, they're sort of easy boys. Sort of. Red. 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 Um. I. Because I know you got two players here, so you don't have can to. Can I phone and- a friend? I don't. <laughs> I mean, this is the problem. Was there was there like no thought process? Was I, like, I want not, evil black dude people. There wasn't no thought process. I'm just so this is the thing. This is I knew this was gonna become a thing. I knew we were gonna get here at some point. 
Um, I'm not good at this, so I don't really know. Like, I do not, I cannot think of a campaign where I've had, like, a good, compelling, successful villain. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> so, like, uh, the dredge are pretty... It was a pretty, like, utilitarian decision. I wanted to have an en- I was like, all right, I want an enemy that they can beat up and murder and brutalize with no remorse. So I was like, all right, cool. So, like, interdimensional demon creatures, that's pretty easy. You don't need to feel bad mm-hmm. about killing them because all they want to do is end your existence, more or less. Or in this case, they want to take over your body and control your... Um... <laughs> Uh, and then I was like, I also want to be able to use whatever stat block I fucking want and not be constrained by types of stat blocks or certain kinds of monsters. So I was like, ah, well, I will make them sort of am- amorphous, uh, sort of nondescript creatures so I can attach whatever stat block I want and they can just ooze into the shape I need them to. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because maybe I want to have a fight that's like a gray render and a pit fiend. Normally, that doesn't make sense. If you make them all goopy, goopy ooze monsters, doesn't matter. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. uh, so that was the other thing. And um, I don't know, weird interdimensional uh, from another world threat. Fun time. Yeah. Good time. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. No. What about rebellion? <laughs> uh, that was an accident. Accident, as in he was he wasn't going to be a villain. He wasn't going to be became... anything. No, he just ended up being a thing because he beat the player's ass and then he survived. So he stuck around for a while and then he kind of became a thing. Yeah, I mean, that happens. <laughs> he was he, like, I didn't ex- I expected him not to be. I was like, I, I kind of was like, well, he might live, uh, but I didn't expect him to turn into anything important. Uh. Hmm. But then I did a little bit more with him, and then he became slightly more important. He's still not like that. I don't even really count him as a villain. He's kind of not like anti-hero. Yeah, he's like an antagonistic force, but he's not really like of win a hundred percent sort of thing. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I don't. I I've tried to figure out. I've tried to pin down what I like when it comes to villains and trying to figure out how to make it work. Uh, And I think I have a stronger idea now. Uh, Mm -hmm. But, you know, the campaign's already rolling, so it's a little bit harder. Although I did, I will say, now that the Oracle is a present character, I've sort of pushed more of the angle of what I want with her. But because Mm -hmm. we're so late in the campaign, it's not gonna hit as hard as it could have. But she'll still be a thing, you know. Mm-hmm. She's there, basically, because base the for context. Because I realize I'm talking about all this and not giving, and no one knows what is going on in her game. Um, the Oracle for Matt and anyone listening uh, is so. If you know anything about Greek history, they always the Oracle of Delphi is what you'll usually hear about. But basically, the Greeks had young girls that they turned into oracles, um, and you know may or may not have them. Tripping on ball, tripping drug, tripping balls on uh, noxious fumes and such to make them quote unquote see the future. It probably wasn't a good practice, but we won't get into the moral quandaries right now. Uh, the so the oracle in my game is sort of a, a reference to that practice back in the Dizay, um, and mm. she she's the reason that the dredge are are trying to kill the players because she. She looked a little too deep into the void and then the void stared back and slapped her a crisp high five and then went, you're on our team now, lady. And she went, oh, okay. Oops. Uh, And she was Ah. not strong enough to resist it. Uh, So she became evil sort of against her will, but she doesn't think she's evil because the dredge don't mind control you so much as they influence your thoughts that are already present and all the bad and negative thoughts you have. They make those the more prominent thoughts. So it's not that they're telling you what to do. They're just nudging you in a specific direction. So she doesn't think she's doing anything wrong. She thinks what she's doing is a good idea. And uh, it's unfortunate that a lot of people are going to have to die for it to work. But, you know, it, that's the price of business sometimes. Mm. It's kind of yeah. that yeah, character. Can we go? Old ass. Oh, yeah, that's the other yeah. thing. She's a child. 
She's trans or rated yeah, yeah. for everybody. Yeah, she's yeah. She, she's a teenager because the oracles were almost always like in the range of twelve to thirteen years old. Uh so yeah, she's sort of a not a not a child soldier, but like a child politician almost kinda. She's a child who got thrust into a very important job against her will. I mean, you Do with that what you will. Yeah. yeah. So in my case, maybe uppercut one too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um but all that being said, uh I guess we should do story time, because maybe this'll I don't know, maybe there's like a lesson out of this one or something. As uh in our most recent session, Sam and Isaiah, you'll know where I'm going with this. Uh, mm-hmm. This also this will pertain to your question, Matt. Um, sure. A character who I didn't necessarily think was going to be a villain, but ended up being a pretty good villain um, yeah. and had a pretty satisfying ending. Um, and the thing that's kind of funny is uh, I didn't really. I didn't do it. Necessarily, I did. So. OK, <laughs> explain the whole thing. Uh, Because I said to Isaiah when this after our session was over, I was like, uh, I was like, yeah, I didn't really do anything to make that work. I just kind of set the dominoes up and knocked them over. Uh, And I still think that's true. Um, But like, obviously, I'm running the game, so I am. My hand is in the. But that was a weird analogy. I was about to say my hand is in the mm-hmm. pie, and I was like, that's a strange analogy. What am I trying to say there? <laughs> I don't know what to... Obviously, I'm influencing the situation. I'm running the game. But what I mean is that things happened very naturally. They fell into place and because of player actions and DM actions. Yeah, they fell into mm-hmm. place. So I would love to say I could tell somebody how to recreate the situation with this character, Letum, but I kind of can't because it just sort of happened. So this character was Sam. Sam started the campaign as a warlock. This character was his warlock patron. And, you know, warlock patrons, the idea for most of them, the way I look at them, most of them are like they want a little something out of you or they have an agenda that's their own. And, you know, they're giving you a crisp high five and some eldritch blast powers. But, you know, they're going to want something back in return at some point. So I was sort of seeding the idea that Letum was maybe getting a little cocky and wanted to, you know, he wanted a pay raise and he wanted to, you know, maybe um, become a god and control the dead. You know, like yeah, maybe what he wanted to do, maybe, uh, you know, normal. Though. Yeah, he was getting a little hubristic, but he wasn't like evil. And actually, even to this point, he's still not evil necessarily so much as he was just getting overly cocky and arrogant about his position. So eventually, for for another reason, Sam ditches this patron, becomes a paladin, and sort of signs up with a different interdimensional being. Uh, the important thing to note here is neither of the characters that Sam signed up with are gods, but they're sort of they're powerful. But they don't ha- control the world necessarily. So he got uh, real mad about that, um, and then Sam went and well, not just Sam, but uh, the party did some actions that very specifically made Letum look bad to all of his friends and or co-workers, really. They're not friends. They're co-workers. (laughs) And by doing said actions to uh, make him look bad in front of his co-workers, he got really, really mad. So he said, you know what, Leah, which is Sam's character, sorry, uh, you got to die because you can't be doing this to me. So he sends after. I talked about this a little bit in one in like two episodes ago, but he sends (laughs) after Leah the other players tertiary characters <laughs> to go and kill him that whole thing happens then they say all right bitch now we're gonna go beat your ass so the players went to his house basically uh kicked his door in and um you know bl- on him. bludgeoned him with a crowbar <laughs> nice and it was good and satisfying because there was you know there was a there's a couple of things that really set it up first of all he's been there since the beginning of the game right he's been a character who's been present the whole fucking time he's always been around you know always coming up in various stages uh so you you know you you get attached to him and by attached i mean like 
Yeah, I guess familiar is probably the better word. You get familiar. You don't necessarily yeah. like or dislike, but like the point is you get to know the character. And then they do some fuck shittery and you're kind of like, ah, oh, well, that's interesting. And then you get to see, you know, there's a progression that you get to see. And then finally there's this, this payout. And also the payout is related to other characters. It sort of shakes up the world in an interesting way. There's other ramifications that are going to come from it. Obviously, the players get some rewards. That's kind of a side thing, but, you know, it's a thing, too. Um, and also from like a mechanical standpoint, you know, it was a good it, it, he, he's a lich uh, or his stat block was a lich and he was in his lair. So he was like, you know, get to do the fun in lair in the lich fight. He summoned some undead you know, buddies to help him out and fight and stuff. So it's like a lot of things just fell very neatly into place. But if someone were to say to me, hey, try and recreate that. Uh, I I cannot. <laughs> There's a lot of planning throughout the entire campaign. Because it, well, it, that's the thing, right? It wasn't planned. We're not planned, not planning, but like foreshadowing things falling into place that you're saying. It wasn't even foreshadowing. Players, the- it like it just sort of was a natural progression. I did. I did something with the character. I did some like let him did something. Sam did something and then let him did something and then Sam did something. And it just kept going back and forth in such a fashion that things just escalated in a very natural <laughs> way. But I couldn't recreate it again if I wanted to, because a uh, it would. I need an, I need a player who's going to cooperate in the way that Sam cooperated. Right? And B, you need to make sure that things. Things need to work out at a similar pace. That's the other thing is I didn't control the pacing of the situation in any way. It just sort of happened the way it happened. Mm. And and it, it just like I didn't I didn't try to I didn't twist the knobs or dials at all. It just sort of happened at a pace that felt relatively like it made sense. So if someone were to turn to me and be like, yeah, try it. Well, so if that works, then just do it again. My response is I I don't I don't I don't know. I don't know uh-huh. how did he? I uh, I can try and do it again, maybe. <laughs> it's like it's a little frustrating on my end because one of the few success stories with a villain I can think of, I didn't feel like I had a very strong hand in. <laughs> so yeah, story time over. But I figured I would tell it at some point. Yeah. Uh, well, what about you, Isaiah? Uh, I don't remember what I said last time. Uh, so you, I did well, you said about time. your the alligator guy. But I guess because like I don't remember if you mentioned it in an earlier episode. But, like, what is the gen? I don't, I'm, unless it's spoiler for your players, I don't know. Like, what's the big bad of your game right now? Like, is what's the one, big? I don't think there is well, one technically. Uh, right? Capitalism. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I'm, I'm actually not making that up. So basically, there, there's no real villain. What I uh, I think the big secret concept making a uh, a deep villain, quote unquote, uh, is just the character themselves is not a villain. It's just a person with a conflict of ideals. Yeah. Well, uh, okay, wait, hold on, pause before you go on. I want to I want to say two things. Um, first, yeah, what what you're talking about the the narrative is uh, is man versus nature as opposed to man versus man, like the type of conflict. Mm-hmm. Um. Which is a which is a story where like yeah there isn't necessarily a villain so much as you're just fighting against like a world, um, but the other thing is you said like you said deep villain, I don't think villains actually need to be deep, they just need to be compelling. Well yeah well sure it can be but I, what, I, what I mean what I mean is it, like there's the like the fun I'm evil because I'm evil villain which who don't really need to be deep but wanted to like the deeper handsome Jack villains. I'm saying. Uh, uh, I don't think you need to don't try to don't think of like deep as good. I think the best way to work up the villain is they ha- there has to be something compelling about them. And it could be yeah. a very it could be a one sentence thing that makes them compelling, but you got to figure out what that is. Huh? Sure, I, I suppose. But yes, that's kind of what I mean. Uh, you know, I so my, my the way that I'm doing the, the villain villain really for this is just it's just a conflict of ideals right uh, mm. the, the first big arc of the campaign was sort of predicated on the idea that uh we uh, you know now that we're rebuilding after the apocalypse we're getting organized 
But there are like these holdouts of like these crazy bandits that are doing their own evil shit. And then the idea was, oh, well, what happens if they get orc? You go, oh, well, that's a that's a problem More bandits than there are civilized people. Right? Like mm. to be in like a civilized society after the apocalypse is, is kind of a, a, a level of fortune that not everybody has. Yeah. Uh, and even people who try to find it, but there's only so much space and food. So they'll probably do it anyway. Get the shit they need. Um, and because of that, you have people who uh, exist in a life of luxury that nobody has, right? Because the the idea is like there's this one city that's made out of like uh, chained together ships and boats, and they have all of the eco- uh, ecological stuff going on there because that very specifically in the, my setting, that you can't grow crops on mass on the wasteland. I think doesn't there's no real explanation to get it doesn't work there are fruits you can make like there's the, like the, the most common one is something i made up called ash fruit with crab apple and when you eat it it literally like cotton candies in your mouth but it's just dry and ashy and gross uh so people don't like eating it uh and after the whole invasion thing happened with the bandits people who have all the food go well we can't trust them with their own food they're a bunch of savages so fuck them we're just gonna leave them to die and that's that's where they're at. So the players are trying to get their food back. They're trying, or they're trying to get their food rights back. And they know, and everybody else in the wasteland knows, is that if this place cuts off all the food, well, we're we're not even going to need bandits. Everyone's going to go to war. But the people often who are in the highest positions don't get that, unless you're more tactic minded. So the lady who owns that city is like, no, I get it. We got to get the food back to. What I did was is that join the ship city the the ship city itself kind of has to lease the property right so to get on the people go oh well i have a ship you can use this to plant crops or you could use out vessel but it's ultimately still that person's ship and they may have their own security services their own people who might be folded in the the the, like military quote-unquote or uh, organization proper who might not be as loyal and the leader knows that so she's like well we got i gotta play ball I, I got no other choice mm. uh so yeah it's just the the villain is human greed which uh you know as a humane i uh i i know how the humane act when they get greedy <laughs> mm. you know so uh that's that's really it for me it's just uh people don't know what the consequences of their actions will be until it bites them in the end mm. but it's very easy i, I don't need like a I don't really need to do all the song and dance of bad guy speech or anything like that because it's, just, it's more effective that the bad guys are sort of faceless and are only really known by their idea. Mm-hmm. And if the players meet some of them, they might notice that maybe they're not as inhuman as they thought they might be. And some of them might just be fucking work. Yeah. You know, I'm having a lot of fun playing with that, especially because I have one character who like intrinsically tied to this place because of her backstory She's not from there but there's someone who is from there that wants her uh because she has o negative type blood which is priceless in a time where you're trying to rebuild society hurt a lot of people yeah kind of so he actually asked me she was up soon and i was like maybe i'm not <laughs> Metaphorical. You know what I mean? mm, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, wait a minute. <laughs> At least he's honest. Yeah. Yeah. I know um I know last time we kinda of talked a little bit about the, the whole reoccurring villain thing. I know it's like a pain in the ass. I completely forgot about this. Um but there's a character in the Curse of Shrod module, uh with Rodin, right? Sam? I think. He's like one huh? of Strahd's henchmen or something. I you don't mean Mahadi from Ernest? No, no, no. Rahadin. He's like a dusk elf guy. I. And it might be. A, I. I, hmm. all so I you, uh, you're you're correct. The manservant. Manservant. Oh, okay. Oh, that's going to make it even better. So <laughs> during in in hey. the three year game, uh, 
my players were like after like they were like chasing like a you know wanted poster and i wanted to have like i just wanted to have like a rival like bounty hunter and i looked at his stat block and i'm like well i'm just gonna rip this out and throw it in my homebrew game like you know fucking most people do when they do homebrew games and he ended up becoming like a reoccurring villain for the players like constantly like they hated like he was very smug Wait, he has is this is this the pale drow no this isn't the pale drow it's a completely different guy yeah no, dust elf. what's this person's elf. name rahadin rahadin yeah oh weird he... not specified oh, okay right. isaiah you can say 5e tool. Oh, oh, this fucking goob. Oh, yeah. 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 And like his stat block's pretty, pretty cool. And I was like, all right, this would be a good villain. Or not, not even. I wasn't even thinking of him as a villain. I was just like, oh, this would be a good, like, opposing force. Yeah. That's a, a cool stat block. A good opposing force because it, you know, the players are going after a bounty. They're trying to find this guy. This Dusk Elf dude is also after the same bounty. So it's like, you know, a race against whoever's going to, you know, get the bounty. And he ended up becoming a recurring villain where players fought him. He came back afterwards going after another bounty. They killed him. And then towards the end of the campaign, because he had a real like rivalry with uh, one of the other players. And the players also pissed off like a devil because high level campaign and D&D is fucking nuts. He came back again and they're like, how many times do we have to teach you this lesson, Dusk Elf? <laughs> And he came back and he's just like, no, no, you don't understand. I have infernal powers now. And they're like, we don't fucking care. Stay in the ground. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you're 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 hitting on a little point there. I don't know if you were doing this consciously or not, um, but. Yeah, I think a big. I want to say secret trick <laughs> secret. I don't know. A good method uh, for from a tabletop standpoint for having players give a shit about villains in, in a way give a shit in so much as like hate them or like them or be you know interested in them. whatever giving a shit means in your game but like you know you the worst kind of reaction right is when you're running a game and a villain shows up and the players look at him and just stare at you and go who this loser i don't right who's mans that is the worst reaction <laughs> so one of the tricks to getting like an actual reaction to having your players give a shit, I think, is, you know, when you're dealing with because tabletop is not a book, right? In a, in a book or a show or a movie or any of that shit, you can control the narrative so you can do a lot more fancy and clever tricks with your villains. You can do things that you won't be able to get away with in tabletop because you're controlling all the characters and all their actions and stuff. So you can you can fine tune a lot more. You can pull off some 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 real sly maneuvers if you're like writing a book. But because we're not doing that in tabletop, you have to be a little more blunt with the, your methods in order to get a similar reaction. So I think one of the big tricks that I, I've one of the tricks I've realized over the years of running games and, wa and watching a lot of other people run games. Um, the villains, if you want them to give a shit about a villain, especially the main villain, homeboy got to keep showing up. He's got to keep showing up. That is like, yeah. even if he doesn't really do anything, even if he just shows up, sits at the table, fucking has a beer with the players and fucks off. Doesn't matter. But you gotta have the bad guy like keep showing up in some fashion or keep they don't even have to like physically show up but they have to in they have to continuously interact with the players over and over and over again and it might yeah. not even be and here's where you get to the big brain strategy right it doesn't even have to be the villain themselves interacting it can be the villain's henchman but mm. then the henchman tells the players and or the players know that these henchmen are from the villain so they get annoyed at the you know what i mean yeah so like you I... want to see a really great example of this uh, <laughs> unfortunately the campaign sputtered out for various reasons but if you watch the mcdm campaign the chain of acheron the first session the villain shows up beats the player's ass just fucking dunks on them hard and then leaves 
And then throughout the campaign later, he keeps sending bitches after them who they know are coming from this guy. And they know that this guy beat their ass and they have a job to go kill him because that's their whole deal. So they continually get more and more annoyed about him because they keep hearing his name. He keeps fucking with them. And also now they want revenge because he beat the shit out of a real bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. You know, the uh, a great uh, a great opener bit or opener scene is like, for example, if you have all your players sitting in the tavern, right? And then the villain shows up in the tavern with some goons. But he's, you know, let's use D&D terms. Your players are level one. Your villain CR 25. They can't. They're not going to attack him because he'll just he'll just murder the fuck out of him. Right. So he yeah. shows up, talks a lot of shit. Maybe he pisses the players off. Maybe he fucks with them, you know, but he rolls up early on, like session one. I'm talking and he's got his henchmen there. And then you get a look at the goons and then you could do that thing where the campaign is about going through each of the goons until you get to the villain, you know, video game style. Right. Yeah. That's a great you know, setup. It <laughs> You know, um, hit, you know, Matt Colvin's video where he did, he's like, you're running your first set game session. I literally did everything he did. And that's it, like beat by beat because he's like, use this and build your campaign from him from it. And that's what I did with the three year game. I ran the same exact dungeon. I named everything the same. I even did the <laughs> thing where kal showed up. kal was yeah. the first major villain of my, my three year game. And I, uh... yeah, and he mostly became <laughs> I, I I changed it and tweaked it and made it made him like my own version, but I literally did the thing where the players their first fight was in the bar, they killed the, the people in the bar because they were a bunch of dickheads, and then Calero <laughs> just showed up, eat their ass, loaded, paid for the fucking the bodies, and had two zombies come and drag yep. the bodies, and then he teleported yep. away. Yep. Yeah, and my players were like, oh fuck, that and is, then after. Yeah. Yeah, after that bit, mostly my players were dealing with dragon cult cultists, so they were constantly fighting dragon cultists and different dragon people. And again, this is why I'm mad. I wish the Fizzman book came out way earlier because I would have used it's so much it. shit for that book. But yeah, and so my players were annoyed. They're like, oh, these fucking dragon cultists now. Same thing with Calorel. And they were always the players always had that in the back of their mind. Like it's because of this person that we're dealing with these people. They're constantly fucking around with us. So yeah, no, having the villain, you know, either show up physically or having minions or show up in ending some, monsters. Yeah. Do some, something, some affect them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, awesome. And and if you might be thinking to yourself, you might be listening and thinking, well, I don't know, maybe that that's uh, that sounds like a good idea, but maybe it's a little silly and contrived. Um, let me counter that point with uh, Star Wars. Uh, Darth Vader shows up in session one oh. of Star yep. Wars. That's literally the, the impetus for the beginning of Star Wars. And um, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if you guys know that little known franchise called Star Wars, but uh, it's doing pretty good for itself. So I think it's a pretty effective move. It is. I, I don't know what yeah. you're talking about, though. Yeah. Like, uh, I, and I, also, I, uh, Darth Vader's a villain a lot of people like. So, you know, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, just in case you need a you need a, another example. <laughs> very, very strong contender there. And also, not only does Darth Vader show up session one, as I said, he shows up and he beats everyone's ass. <laughs> mm. So, you know. It's a good trick. Yes. Granted, I don't listen to my own advice and probably should, but you know, whatever, it's fine. But kind of kind of going with like the Vader thing, uh, I had another like just thought because again, you know, tabletop games, like I mean, this could be like generalized between like D D, Pathfinder, whatever fucking playing. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, yes, D and D and D and D, D and D's cousin. D and D, yeah, yeah. and then the not other D and D. Yeah, yeah, the other D and D. The only two and games <laughs> Matt knows: D and D and not D and D. Yeah, no, I know a couple others. I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> uh, but like, I've been thinking about like it's like uh, I don't know why because I was talking with someone about Skyrim the other day and thinking you know they have the three factions you know the the Dark Brotherhood they had Thieves Guild and the Fighters Guild and mages and everything it's like. Those weren't the like, factions, all right? Well, some of them. the factions were the the Nords right, and two, the fucking. All right, you know what I mean, though. The the different guilds. The guilds, okay, right. yeah, yeah. And you know, when it comes, like when you do tabletop games, you can. There's so many good examples of like different guilds, evil organizations that you can kind of throw in. Like the big one, obviously, is like cults. Everyone likes fighting cultists. Like, yeah. they're organized. They believe in something like crazy and out there that you know is wrong, mm -hmm. and you don't feel bad about. Eating the shit out of them. 
We're killing well, maybe a little bit. A little bit. I, there you are. Eh, no. <laughs> be a smidgen. Like we no. worship worship the lobster god doop boop doop. You must right, be something. Yeah, I, like, right, I, no. I, I, I just feel bad um, for whatever team I had to make all those yeah. fireball and all. Yeah. <laughs> uh I mean I think the big reason why cults are so popular is because most people know what a cult is. Yeah. Most True. people know that cults are generally a bad thing. Also really um, easy to justify why there's a giant mass of of nameless minion goons if you have a cult. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Promised power just, you know. or I'm seeking something magic. Or they just not I mean some cult you could some cults could just be like, I don't know, I had nothing better to do with my life. <laughs> a lot of that going on. I found deeper meaning in shanking someone with this knife of ball. Uh, found deeper meaning in my homegirl <laughs> Tiamat, and you're like, all right, well. Mm-hmm. And then I got the hand of Vecna. All right, Joe. Go down. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, yeah. yeah, like, cults are pretty good. Um, like, the thief, I don't know, it's weird, because in in D&D terms, a thieves guild and an assassin's guild can basically be, like, the same thing. And not necessarily they don't have to be evil, but they can make a pretty good villain organization your players can go up against. Um, Like, like I, I did in, my, in the three-year game. I don't know. I feel like uh, I, it, it, you have like adverse, uh, like, or, yeah, 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 adverse, yeah. Um, or I have one in my setting. There, so there's like the military. What's left of the U.S. military? Mm-hmm. And they had like an offshoot branch that tried to rebel and like lost. And they're like half of the people think that they, they're like, nah, they're just basically bandits. Sometimes not fuck you over. A lot of people are like, eh, you know, like a business. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, they, they sort of exist as these great bad guys. They, they do just enough ali- like illegal shit to be like, they might just kill you if they, like, even though they're not allowed to because you're both part of an organization. They might just try and hide the body. But they also, you know, at the same time, if they're like, oh yeah, we got sent to kill you, and you're like, I'll pay you double. They're like, all right, cool. Half the money up front. And they'll just leave you alone. Uh, and they're they're great. There's this there's always this game that has to be played of like players are being antagonized. You know, they're D and D players. At the end of the day, they want to kill everything that calls them dum dums, <laughs> but you can't unless you can make sure no one can tell you about it. Yeah. So, a lot of <laughs> uh, yeah, guild. I mean, when you talk about guilds, like the idea of the thieves guild, the assassins guild, the fighters guild, etc., so, etc. Cetera, et cetera. I don't. I don't know. If- Guilds in well, that's the why I, I, like dark organizations, quote unquote. Like yeah, some kind well, of... so yeah, I think what you're talking about is more like evil factions. Sure. A, a, yeah. a guild is a conglomerate of people trying to legit, you know, do some sort of legitimate like business, usually. Um, sure. Right. Like if you got like, I mean, in actual history, right, a guild was like you had the leather workers guild. Everyone there makes, you know, leather shit. You know, they're they were like um I don't want to say they were like unions, but they're sorta of like a kind of medieval version of a union. Um so yeah, like but yeah, like if you're talking about like big evil like I think the difference I guess the real difference is like scale and purpose. Cause when you say guild, I think smaller and focus on like a very specific business. When you say faction, I think bigger and has a very big goal, usually. Yeah, I guess it depends on the type of game you're running. Like, if it's something like, I don't know, like you're running a game in, in you know, a fantasy city, having a faction would be good. But if you're like out in the countryside, maybe a guild would be better. If you're uh, playing in like Lost Minds of Fendelver. Well, I, I think uh, it's it, a guild can be part of a faction, but a faction can't necessarily be a guild. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Okay. Which, fair yeah. enough. I, I I use those interchangeably in my settings, so. Yeah, they don't mean quite I the call same the kettle thing. and all that. Yeah. Um, well, uh, no, not even because for me, I have three factions and twelve guilds. Guilds work. Factions at bay. So maybe not. Yeah, it's it's kind of. I mean, if you redefine what the guild, what a guild is in a setting, right? And then then obviously right. you can change things. But in the very traditional, uh, like actual medieval history sense, yeah, it's it's a slightly. But 
I don't know, whatever. Semantics, I guess, at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because pretty sure uh, the super powerful we do whatever we want dudes in uh, the Dune books are called the Guild, if I remember correctly. Yeah, the Spacers Guild. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> kind of kind of ignoring my own statement there, but uh, whatever, it's fine. Uh, and then I had a couple other ones here, like the you know a mob crime syndicate. You know the the mafia. I don't I don't know. I don't I don't think I've ever done like a mafia type deal mm-hmm. in a game of D anD D well enough. I tried, and then it, like immediately I was like it became the stereotypical like, hey you over there, oh, and it's not all my players started speaking in Italian accents, <laughs> and I'm like, all right, you know what, I'm just gonna I'm gonna just let this. Let's just be a one-off. <laughs> it's, yeah, I, okay. it's not a very well, fantasy trope, the idea of the mafia. No, family. it's not. No. Uh, I so The best advice I have for running a mob, because the whole Gary old, like, uh, the factory workers thing, it, it's, it's, it's a, that's a mob organization, right? Like, it's a massive mm. crime syndicate, essentially. It, it, uh, the only thing I can say is, if you've ever watched It's Always Sunny, it's the joke of, it's the implication, right? Because mm. <laughs> the players know, <laughs> if, they, if they kick down Al Capone's door... There's like 60 dudes in there, right? Like, yeah, yeah you're going to kill Al Capone. You might kill his, like, his guy. You, you're, there's no way you're killing everybody when they're all just as armed to the teeth as you are. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and you never have, you, you put them, what, what I would do, right, is like, I, I put them on the wrong side of the moral board, but the right side of the law, right? Like, they're technically following the rules. They're not doing anything overtly illegal, so you can't just shoot them for it. Yeah. You have to, you have to figure out their loophole counteract it and you have to make it very 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 clear to the players like if you act out of turn there will be some serious consequence for you as the players but whatever organizations that they speak for right Mm -hmm. and when you have those things sort of set up and you put them on the board you can do pretty much whatever you want like that that is from what i remember that's that's what i said last time for the bad guy speech right like yeah. Make sure that your players can't attack the bad guy. Yeah, you had the whole gun to, to their head. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like you, you want the Negan thing. Not maybe necessarily to like the same degree where they're literally on their knees every two seconds the bad guy shows up to do a speech. Yeah. But you you want that feeling of like, God, I want to punch you in the face so bad, but if I do, I'm gonna get shot. You mm-hmm. know, you want that. There'll be ramifications. Yeah. Yeah, you want the ramifications, you want them to be really clear. And, you know, you have to find a very healthy balance. Players feel like they're constantly helpless and they constantly have to hear this bad guy drone on forever. And they're just going to be like, well, uh, where, my agency, where, where did it go? Where did it go, GM? Mm-hmm. What happened? Uh, and then you're like, uh, you know, what my story, what my game. So, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, an impasse. There, um, there's a part of me that wants to do the meme where I think it's from Borderlands 2, where there's like the infinite dialogue like thing going on with a with an NPC and the way to get out of it is if you literally shoot them in the face. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, yeah, the, the, I, I I just want that for some reason the players just are they're talking to someone and it's just nonstop. And it's like Matt, all right, can I and I'm just gonna keep talking and then I'll like wait for a player to be like, <laughs> Alright, that's it. Uh, I, I I chop him with my axe. <laughs> chop his head off. Fuck this. <laughs> Yeah, I, don't know, I think you think it'd be funny. Uh, yeah, no, that'd be fucking great. <laughs> I think the mob family idea. I think the reason it doesn't quite work in like a fantasy sense is because uh, kind of the thing Isaiah was talking about, where in uh, you know when you're dealing with fiction, a big thing about the mob family trope is that the the mobs have rules and are very specifically going either around or finding loopholes in the law and shit, which. Yeah. Those sorts of things don't. First of all, because we don't a lot of people don't know history. Well, and I mean, shit, we don't even probably have enough information about how laws worked back then. Mm-hmm. But also the laws we have today are a very different kind of thing than they would have been back then. And the mob family is kind of predicated on playing with that idea. Right. So a big thing with like the Yakuza or like the Italian mob idea is, oh, yeah, they're breaking the law, but um, also they pay for the preschool. So all the people that live near the preschool don't want them to be gone because they're paying for the kids to go to school. So we like that. Uh, so, no, you can't get rid of the mob, right? So it's that whole thing of yeah. like they're playing with the morals, they're playing with the law and shit. And yeah, that stuff doesn't 
doesn't quite fit the fantasy stuff as much. Well, I think in it's funny because in the Forgotten Realms lore, the the Zentarum, they're basically that. But throughout all, yeah, there's so many different really iterations, goofy. and they change from being like they're an evil organ. There's so many different. Sorry, there's sex right, of the right. Zentarum. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are like a mafia. Some of them are a bunch of evil dark mages. Some of them are just thugs. And it, it's funny how many different iterations of the Zentarum are there have been. Even just going just from 5e, like they, they constantly change. Yeah. They, and if you look back even further, it's like, fuck, <laughs> what is they, the Zentarum? They feel kind of fun. They, that's the funny thing, too, right? Is because they are trying to do kind of the mob thing with them, but they do feel really goofy in a lot of ways. And also a lot of the stuff, a lot of like the stories that they get involved in don't feel very like mafia to me, you know, mm -hmm. it's a different. It's not like. The Zentarum aren't doing like a Scarface thing, really. You know, there's like a very specific tone. The the mob, uh, like it's kind of a genre, actually. I, I, I was I was saying trope before, but it's actually kind of a genre. But like the mob genre has a very specific tone thing. That's, mm. I mean, you could do it in fantasy. It's just a little harder. Yeah, yeah. you'd you'd be you sort of have to shift, shift some things around, right? Like it's probably not going to be like a whole criminal syndicate, but probably going to be like the local feudal lord who's like kind of be more of a dictator than he probably should, but he's within his right because his land and like, well, like you're like, like oh, well, how do we deal with that? It's like, okay, well, you have to go to the other feudal lord who wants that guy's land mm -hmm. and then you tell him the secret way in and you go to the first feudal lord and be like, hey, so I told him how to get in, but I can know how to get, like, I know what their weaknesses are now. I know, like, let's say, you know, their heavy, their heavy cavalry can't move in, like, thin spaces. There's a plot right over there. Nice thin pass that, that that you'll sort of cut them all up, right? Like you kind of you want to play both sides. And yeah. See, ideally. but even even you describing that though, that just sound that sounds like uh, that sounds like sort of courtly intrigue nonsense. <laughs> it's you know well, what I mean? The, yeah, but which, I, I which, think that's what it that's kind what of mob is what movies it is. are. It's but sort like, of a different kind of court, though, right? Because mob is. movies, it's like it's it's the like it's the law, but then it's mob law. Or well, in like a medieval thing, it's it's you know, you have the king or whatever the monarch, dictator, or emperor is, uh, like the lordly shit going. Well, I think the thing that's kind of funny when you're describing that, because I was just thinking about the Yakuza games, and like the entire story of Yakuza Zero is based on the premise that these three dudes are trying to buy a plot of land for a shitload of money to do some shit with like some taxes and like to own a slightly larger portion of the city so that the paperwork is better and oh also the person who owns the plot of land we have to find them so they can sign that like sign the ownership over it like all of that would sound really weird in like a fantasy setting you know what i mean <laughs> like it it's it's um i don't know what the word like yeah you, you have to adjust it and then it kind of becomes a different thing once you adjust it. So it's like, I don't know. It's just a weird. I just I can't see any way of doing it without it coming across kind of weird. And then what ends up happening is like what Matt's players do, where they just make jokes about like it's a gabagool, you know, <laughs> like I feel like it's so it's so hard to like avoid that if you mm -hmm. try and do even just the word mob, right? Like, yeah. you say the word mob and your players are like, oh, oh boy, who's gonna make it the spaghetti? And you're like, god damn it. Fuck. <laughs> it's, like the, it's like an instinct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it's weird, because this actually now makes me think I didn't have this question in mind. And I've thought about this, dude. Like, have you guys ever thought about, like, trying to actually run, like, an evil campaign? Like, all the players no. are bad guys? Not to like, not long, not long term, but like a mini campaign or something where everybody's I've a bad guy. Played in one of, I've I've oh, done yeah? it three times. Oh shit! We've talked about I'm, this, I'm, Matt. I've yeah, never done no. it. It's been a while. We've talked about this multiple times, Matt. Ah, it's been, it's been a while. I've basically run three different evil campaigns. Yeah, how the how the how the how they go? How they go? It goes fine. Look, it's not that hard. I, I look, I'm gonna be honest, and I, I think Sam could back me up. Probably. I don't know. Maybe Sam will have a different opinion on this. But like, yeah, Sam was in one of my evil games, my Stars Without Number campaign. The players served an ancient evil alien cult, right? That was the game mm. where they abducted the hookers, the strippers. Mm. Remember that story? I, I took no part. In and this. also they murdered the lady and then chopped her up and shoved her in her own freezer. You remember that? Also, I especially didn't take part in that. Same, yep, same yep, campaign. Yep, yep. 
literally yeah. went in a direction that I did. like. I literally it, it, was like, aw- it, it went pretty out of control. Like, <laughs> I was literally like off, you know, just talking to some guy. And I'm like, okay, all right, they're gonna wild. go do their own thing. They're just gonna kidnap her. They're just gonna scare yeah. her a little bit. Nah, nah, man, just fucking murders her and just shoves her in her freezer. Yeah. I'm just sitting there. I'm like, thank God my character doesn't know any of this because he'd be freaking out right now. <laughs> and then my other, yeah. So there was that, and then there was my Dungeon World campaign. Where I basically did the chosen one thing, but instead of being the good chosen ones, the players were the bad chosen ones. Mm-hmm. They were the agents of chaos as opposed to order. Um, and then, uh, what was the other one? Um, actually, I've had a couple of other ones that were sort of... Oh, oh and the, like Blades in the Dark, your characters are basically bad guys by default. You you're criminals. You're criminals. I, you, can be, you can be criminals that are sort of on like I, the arguably... like. You can be the kind of criminal where it's good intentions, bad methods, but at the end of the day, your characters are like, are criminals. They are doing like bad shit. Like you can't not do that in Blades of the Dark. In mm-hmm. the same way that you're not going to play Cyberpunk and not do gigs, right? Like same idea. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like, look, I don't. I'm gonna be honest. I the whole thing of like, man, how do you do an evil campaign? It's so hard. It's really not hard. Right? It's very simple. The trick is to the evil campaign. First of all, you have to give first and foremost, if your players want to be playing bad guys, you have to give them the goal of the campaign has to be, you know, something evil. Yeah. Because I can't tell you how many times I've seen stories of like, oh, I tried to do this evil campaign or whatever. Um, and then the like objective they gave the players was like not evil it was like a good guy thing to do Mm -hmm. you know like all right well you have to give them an evil goal like that's the whole point you're not gonna be like oh yeah yeah so bad guy players um go save the little girl from the goblins no you're gonna go kill all the goblins and then rob the goblins and then kill the little girl so there's no witnesses (laughs) right like Mm -hmm. that's what the evil characters do so that's the first thing Second thing, you have to make sure that your players all agree not to be dickheads to each other. Yeah, which is the real crux of it. Honestly, I think most of the time, because a lot of people are like, oh, the evil campaign doesn't work because the players fuck each other over. No, what you need to do is have the discussion of you're all bad guys. You're not killing each other (laughs) because you're all bad guys together, comrade. Yeah, yeah. together. because you're (laughs) assets to each other. The whole point is you want to do something so grand and evil. You couldn't do it alone. Otherwise, you would be on your own, right? So you're not fucking each other over because you're assets to each other. They could be dickheads to each other. But the point is like the player on the player level, not so much the character level, but more so on the player level, you're all agreeing not to literally screw each other or try and kill each other in your sleep because that's not what being evil is. You're just being a fucking idiot and or a dickhead. Like, that's not, you know, yeah. like. Think about. I've, OK, think about Starscream and Megatron, <laughs> right? Yeah. Mm. Starscream very, yeah. very badly would love to kill Megatron's ass and take his position. But he knows he can't because if he does, all the other Decepticons are going to beat the fuck out of him and or some other bad shit's going to happen or it's all going to fall apart because Star- Starscream's an idiot. And Megatron knows that Starscream wants to kill him, but he's a useful asset to keep around. So he just leaves him there. And then every time Starscream chalks shit and Megatron's like, bitch, I know what you're doing. Don't test me. Right. You know what? I'm, That's literally I'm really, like, I'm really uh, sad that the, was it the, the Michael Bay movies? Yeah, they that the never, movie that never came yeah. like that never yeah. happened at all. Nah, let's not talk about those movies. I don't, I don't want to go on a tirade right just, now. I hate right, them so I, much <laughs> as a big Transformers fan. I hate them very deeply, but anyway, I'm, Okay. The, the Starscream Megatron uh, relationship is what if you're doing an evil campaign, that is how you do it, right? That is what your players need to understand. Your players are four copies of Starscream and Megatron. Yeah, <laughs> two of your players are Megatron. Two of your players are Starscream. Right? I, I think we also we actually pulled it off as a group, right? Then to Avernus. Yeah, yeah, same idea. Oz clearly, uh, uh, we've said before was evil as shit and made it very clear that he was evil as shit and you know several times i as pause was like i should just I just dip right now and they'd all be dead and i can get what i want and so in the immediate future, but i would be fucked fucked in the long right term. after that yeah mm. where and you know no one trusted pause most of people wanted him gone but he had information 
and also dealt a lot of damage. Yeah, he's valuable so, to like, keep around purely based on survival, if nothing else. Yeah. And that's, that's, yeah, that's the same same idea, is the pause situation send versus the exact same premise. The only difference being, instead of Starscream and Megatron, it was Starscream and Optimus, because we weren't necessarily evil, but, like, you know, pause was still Starscream, <laughs> right? Um, and then the other thing, the other thing from a GM side of the table, again, make sure to get your players to all agree to the Megatron-Starscream relationship, uh, but the other thing is, if you're playing an evil campaign and your players have agreed, yes, we want to be bad guys, and you say, okay, you're playing bad guys, you need to understand as the GM, your players are going to do fucked up shit to get what you want. So the normal ways of delivering an objective are not going to work, right? Mm -hmm. Let me get to give you like to just make up an example. If you're playing a if you're playing a normal D and D campaign, or or any, or if you're playing a normal, um, I mean this applies to basically anything, right? D and D campaign, cyberpunk campaign, fucking uh, space campaign, like the same idea. If your players are good guys, then they are going to be given a mission by some dude, and that dude's gonna go, "Hey, I got some money here for you. If you can take care of this problem for me." Cool. We'll go do the job for you. They get the job done. They get paid. Nice. If you're playing in an evil campaign and the local guard goes, yeah, so we have some extra money um, uh, in, in the safe at the barracks. Uh, could you go save this little girl for us? The evil players are going to go or counter argument. Um, we kill all of you in the barracks and rob you. That's what the evil characters are going to do. They're not going to go save the little girl. They're going to no. kill all the guards, take the money out of the barracks, and then go kill the little girl to see if she has any money on her. <laughs> yeah. So you have to understand as a GM your the the types of situations you're going to set up. The players are going to come at them differently, and also you need to have different kinds of problems for them because you can't use moral dilemmas as a problem, right? Uh, you know. The captain of the guard arrest the players. The evil players are just going to kill the captain of the guard and make a break for it. Whereas the good players will hand over their weapons because of moral reasons. They don't want to kill the captain of the guard, right? They'll, they feel bad about it. The evil players are not going to feel bad about it. So you have to re you have to reconfigure how you hand them quests and objectives and what you want them to do. I think well, so. I, I think something. I think where people usually trip up campaigns right it, the moral dilemma i think is often uh handled in right because like i think the idea of putting like moral qualms in front of evil party i think that works fine i think you just need to be okay when they do the evil thing right because yeah. like if you if you're like oh well if you like save a little girl you would have been paid more okay yeah but we're evil and you're like all right cool and then you keep putting those those rewards in front of them, and it's like, are, or are you going to keep? And it's it's just this little test, right? It's the carrot, and you're seeing, and they're going to bite. Yes. yes. And if they never do, then goddamn, they're pretty good at maintaining mm -hmm. character. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I th I think you should reward them for that, right? That you're like, oh, oh yeah, definitely. You've done so much evil that Vecna's like. Uh, nice shit, bro. Five, my you guy. Will, yeah. You will get the thumb of Vecna. My my point exactly. <laughs> My point is that, uh, yes, Isaiah, you can still put the moral quandaries in front of them, but um, when they do the evil thing, don't be sitting there surprised Pikachu. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, you have to be you aware of what of they're going to do. You have knowing to come full at well it. that, yeah. yeah. Come yeah. at it from a different direction. That being said, one thing you can do that will still work on evil players is rather than having existential moral quandaries, have internal moral quandaries or things that threaten the evil characters like for example let's say you're playing an evil campaign and one of the players is like is like the court mage and the king doesn't know he's evil what you do then is you put the you put an objective in front of him where it's like oh uh yeah so this person's trying to reveal your fucked up plans to the king and then the evil player goes shit how do i solve that problem uh they want you to do a, a job for them and then they won't tell the king and then you have to go fuck i want to kill them you know and then the court mage who's the bad guy is like uh who's the player 
I want to kill them so bad, but they have this information that's threatening my position, so I, I'm going to have to put up with their bullshit, right? That's the other way you do it. If you threaten, Until they can figure out a way to get rid of the Yeah, you, th you have to threat evil characters you have to threaten selfishly as yeah. opposed to heroes who you can threaten the planet and the heroes go, well, we got to save the planet. The evil characters go, eh, I can find a new planet. It's fine. I'm going to wild space. Fuck yeah. y'all. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Sam, after that tirade, since you were partaking in my nonsense uh, in question, any other <laughs> thoughts? Um, also, I need water. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, having um, understanding how to make evil players motivated is very important because um, yeah. they'll just kind of go with whatever they desire. Yeah. So really, the only way that you can quote unquote punish them is by taking away their toys. Yeah. yeah. And obviously, you don't selfish. You do selfish, it in um, friends. Like you don't do it in such a way that it's like, oh, I'm going to take away your favorite NPC or whatever bullshit. Like you threaten them. Yeah. You don't just straight up take it away because then they have to fight for something specific. And also, if you're threatening an NPC, for example, uh, you can't you can't do Aunt May and Spider-Man. Right. If Spider-Man was evil, he doesn't give a shit if Aunt May dies. You have to do the thing where you threaten their like useful henchmen. And the reason they care about the henchmen is because they're a valuable asset, not because they give a shit about the person. Right. Yeah. Or they're like main <laughs> well, contact, like they're fixer or something. Yeah, or fixer, like, yeah right. Maybe. Well, like, fuck, valuable my evil jobs fashion. come from that guy. God damn well, it. I think I think there there's something to say, right? If, like, if you're doing an evil campaign, you can still threaten Aunt May. Uh, You just need Aunt May to be the selfish thing, right? Like, oh, like, you know, a lot of villains like, oh, yeah, I'm evil, but I have a daughter, right? It's like it's dead shot in his daughter. If it's that mm -hmm. kind of a yeah, villain, I'm assuming yeah, yeah. I'm assuming I yeah, I'm assuming a level of evil where they're just like fucking unbelievably degenerate. Like I'm going all the mm -hmm. way to the bottom evil like Fair they enough. don't care about anyone. But yes, if yeah, probably your players are going to be playing the kind of villains where it's like they do still care about some things. Um, And yeah, yeah it's, in it's, that case, yes, dead shot in the daughter makes sense. Uh, you want to put the things that they care about at risk. You don't just want to like, right? Because if if fucking if Waller was just like, hey, so you're gonna work for us, and we killed your daughter, he's gonna just gonna be like, oh fuck you, I guess. What the fuck the am fuck? I working for you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck All out right. of here. Yeah, uh, yeah. You don't want to take it away. Like to, is to what Sam was saying. You just want to be like, hey, real quick, call your daughter. Like, oh, oh, there's this guy who keeps asking for you. You're like, oh no! Oh, it's like mm -hmm. you know, you could do the the Silco thing in the campaign where he just yeah. shows up at your house and he's playing blocks uh -huh. with your daughter, and uh -huh. he's just like, yes. ah. exactly. He's just like, he's like, boss, are we good? He's like, I don't know. Are we? He's just like, are we good? Puts the yeah. That, was, on the that yeah. was probably uh, the best scene yeah. in in Arcane. It's just when he's at the the, the lady's house playing blocks with her kid. And it was the police officer like, guy. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. It was the... the no, no, no. He was, the, he was young in the beginning. Spoilers for yeah. Arcane, by the way. It was the young cop who became the chief later yeah, on yeah, in yeah. the show. Yeah. For some Mustache. reason, I was thinking of the, the, the redhead lady with the gas mask. Who Jace... Or no. Uh, I just annihilates her son. Or no, it was Jace. It was Jace, yeah. Uh, I was thinking of that lady. But no, yeah. The cop dude, right? And you're just... It's, it's yeah. the... Um, Oh God, what's what's the scene I'm thinking of in Peak Blinders? Where you're like, oh no, Tommy's just insane. Uh, <laughs> I many scenes. I know. What was the, I'm trying to think of the big one? Like, I, uh, that's another show I keep being told I, to watch. Oh God, Matt, you gotta watch Peak Blinders. It took me a long time to convince Isaiah on that one. Yeah. Um. So I, I did. I did just have another thought though. So there's another really key thing when it comes to if you want to do the evil campaign thing. Yeah. Uh, but this is this is somewhat out of your hands as a GM. This is this is kind of requires the players to cooperate. Uh, mm -hmm. A big thing when it comes to hero and villain archetypes. Heroes are reactive. Villains are proactive. Yeah, uh, I was going to say something like that with the, when it comes to like the, the whole idea of fronts. Yeah. Like, you know, uh -huh. villains are the, the movers and shakers of the yes. world. They're the ones that do things. Players react to it. If you if, flip that, the players now have to be the ones 
that yeah. shape the world uh-huh. you're saying. Yeah. because if nothing bad happens the hero doesn't need to be a hero because nothing bad's mm-hmm. happening so everything's fine so they don't need to pick up their sword and go fuck bitches up so the the vil- villains are proactive so normally when you're running a game you make your villains proactive Vecna threatens the world everyone's gonna die okay heroes get ready here you go time to go be his ass so be- you need to if you want to do the evil campaign thing really well you need to say to your players <laughs> You guys have to do things of your own impetus based on your own goals. And one of the reasons that our Stars Without Number campaign worked was because my players were doing their own shit. Like, they were going after their own shit. Like, as soon as they had a moment, they'd be like, all right, this is what we're going to do next. This is the next step. Like, we're going after this. We're going after that. And they had that proactive nature. So... That's the same thing with, again, I, I've mentioned, I think I've mentioned this a couple of times, but Blades in the Dark as a game mm. works best when you have really proactive players who are trying to get their own shit done, who are trying to complete their own goals, do their own jobs, and say they say to you as the GM, this is what we're going to do next. Yeah. That's how that's how that shit works. So, but again, that isn't, uh, you can't force your players to do that you have to tell them if you want this to work this is something i need you guys to do for me that's a that's a that's a big um trick to it i guess right i mean sam I, i'm sure i'm sure you remember mm-hmm. uh wombat telling you at various stages like all right you go do this and then i'll go do that and then we'll we'll do figure out here and then we'll loop back around to that right like mm-hmm. you guys were making plans sure. all the goddamn time I distinctly remember the, the part where they sent your character, Sam, to go talk to your like uh, the guy who helped you pay for the church building. And we're like, hey, bud. Um, yeah, so we can't do business anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you basically broke up with that poor man. <laughs> yeah, that was the time. I remember that, that should. Yeah, that that. um, Yeah, that's a big. Thing. I don't know. Maybe I like maybe. Maybe we should just do a whole episode about playing the evil campaign, but maybe, yeah. we sort of half did there. Kind of half. <laughs> I, it actually got, got sort of me, kind of. like, given me an idea of like doing like a mini evil campaign and then build it to another campaign where the players are good guys going after their old characters who are now like yeah. the overlords of the world. Of people have had park. that thought. Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah of people like it sounds like a cool idea. I don't know how it would be, you know, how work on paper, but yeah, I think thought. the secret there, if you want to do that, is you have to make sure that the players, the, the the evil characters, the first characters they play, have a very distinct uh, we know what we want to get done goal. Like yeah. They have to have a very specific goal, like this is what we're going to do. The plan is you know, get the hand of Vecna and do the ritual so we control all of the undead in the entire land. Right? Like They have to have a very succinct objective for that to work because then once they do that succinct objective that is then the uh inciting incident for the hero characters to come in mm-hmm. right whatever that whatever that evil goal is is the inciting incident if if people do want um some kind of like good inspirational like reading the the book of vile darkness both the third edition and the fourth edition version very good very good ideas for both like making villains, helping out with that shit, but also actually running evil campaigns and like giving you like some helpful tips and like goals and themes and stuff. That I've been uh, kind of flipping through them like just randomly the other day thinking about this topic and I'm like, oh shit, this is good stuff here. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a be honest though. Real shit here. Yeah. The evil campaign thing, it ain't that exciting. No. It's, kind of, it's kind of overrated. I'm going to be real. It's one of those things where it's like it'd be cool to do once. Do it and once. Then, yeah. yeah, you'll do it. Well, I, I, as someone who's done it multiple times, it is it is not that exciting. It really isn't because yeah. the reason would want to do it long term. I just like like you kind of said like the mini games, like ten sessions max. I mean, I, I did it for a while. I mean, Stars was a good thirty plus sessions. Um, <laughs> but yeah, right, like, for, for me, I think the novelty after like ten. I, totally. Even sooner than that. Yeah. Mm. Oz was fun because there was constantly good players that like to bounce off of. Yeah. Hey, but when everyone's evil, it's like the thing. 
Yeah. I mean, like, especially so for like the stars with that number character, it, for me especially, like, my character wasn't evil, evil. He was just kind of like present. He was in, in a bad stitch. He wasn't. He wasn't trying to stop the evil, but he wasn't trying he wasn't to helping. be evil. Yeah. <laughs> like, he was a neutral party, so it definitely made that one a little bit more interesting for me, especially. I like, it's funny because, like, in video games, I'm like, yeah, I'll do the evil campaign this time. Does the good campaign. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think, eh. yeah, because I think what ends up happening is what you realize is the reason that the evil campaign is, like, actually not that compelling is because a lot of what makes stories compelling is sort of the the difficult choices and the and the uh like not necessarily just moral quandaries but like the idea that heroes don't get to take the easy answer every time but <laughs> villains by definition are almost always going to go for the easy answer most of the time oh, yeah. so what ends up happening when you do the evil campaign thing is like Every sol- every situation gets solved basically the same way, so it sort of loses the like fun of it because you're like, oh well, they're just gonna kill everyone every single time without any question because why wouldn't they? Or or whatever their trick is, you know, they'll figure out a specific trick and then just do it every time. For example, it, to use the stars out number campaign again, my one player who was the psionic, he would just mind control everybody all the goddamn yep. time. <laughs> Right, like everybody yeah, was a just good, a puppet. That's a good easy thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, and there was never any. There was no moral quandary. There's no give it a shit. There was no like feeling bad about it. There was no concern about how it would come back around to bite him. He just mind controlled everyone that he could all the time. Mm. <laughs> yep. So like, that's what ends up happening is the villain characters are like, "This is my trick. It works very well. I'm gonna keep doing it." <laughs> so and then you run to like the the person that's like you know, uh, Jabba the Hutt, and they're like, "Your Jedi mind tricks." work on me you're just like uh, fuck ah! funny you say that <laughs> funny you say that i had like two sessions where i threw robots at the characters and that one player went ah my one weakness <laughs> so, yeah. yeah i did basically that yeah. it's pretty funny it was like the whole plate it was like a campus and the whole campus had robot security and that one player was like i hate you i was like yeah <laughs> you know just like <laughs> crawling on the floor like fetal position like future yeah. it, literally all of his abilities were like mind reading and mind control basically so he just <laughs> Just couldn't do shit and do anything. It was pr- it was pretty funny. Like, all right, Jameson, what are you doing? Hiding in the corner. Yeah, being <laughs> let me know sand. when there's a real person. <laughs> it's yeah. the clap trap with stairs. Thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, do it for a time, but uh, yeah, not as it's probably not going to be as cool or fun as you think it. Would be. Yeah. And, and the, the other thing too is. The reason so many players want to do the quote unquote evil campaign is because they just want to have a couple of sessions where they can like eat babies and not feel bad about it. That's all. Yeah. And then once they get it out of their system, they're going to be like, hey, all right. (laughs) You know? Yeah. Yeah, That's why I definitely think like not long term. I mean, the idea of using it towards something like you were talking about, Matt, uh, that's going to work. That'll work way better. Yeah. Because that has like a very specific purpose. But, you know, anyway. But yeah. I guess any you know, any any closing thoughts, guys, on, on bad guys, villains, evil characters, evil organizations, anything, video games, anything we kind of talked about today. This is this episode, like uh, like all episodes, I fucking host, kind of been all over the place. Uh, yes, they they are, but uh, <laughs> no thoughts. Um. Uh, I think a good villain, they are. Phrase I'm looking for. Curry. Well, no, 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 not that, but like. It, it... Good villains are good because they feel natural. Like, it feels like someone who. Go, oh, I, I can sort of. I get it. When you try really hard to make a villain super engaging or super complex multifaceted they often just sort of feel like weird np or dmpcs yeah. <laughs> uh, like mm-hmm. a good villain you you have an idea you have like a premise maybe for me it's a lot of the time it's a personality type. like uh, the sleazy mobs 
uh, I fucked up and I'm just trying to help now. Uh, and just let them go to their logical conclusion. That's really what a villain is, right? A villain <laughs> is a person who is who pushed to the probably edge. was like, yeah, right. It's it's someone who's hit rock bottom and they're like, well, uh, you know, I want to protect everybody. That becomes I want to like a dictator who keeps everyone like safe, but they have no free will. You know? Yeah, that, that was the, basically uh, one of the big bads in my game. Yeah, it's it's that uh, it's that it's the AI quandary, right? Of like. How do you save humanity? AI comes to the conclusion you have to destroy humanity to save them. Yep. <laughs> right? Is that whole thing? It's the fucking. I mean, it's the universal Ultron. Villain. It's uh. it's the universal will in, in Guilty Gear, but we're not going to go down that road right now. But you know, that's what that was. Um, <laughs> ears. Yeah, kind of, and kind of bouncing off um, what Isaiah said. Yeah, they don't have to be complex or crazy or like super deep or anything like i said they just have to be compelling so the idea of the guy who decides the only way to save everyone is for me to become a psycho fascist dictator is a compelling villain especially if you find out that the reason that they're like the reason that they have that thought or think that's a good idea is because oh my entire family you know was brutally murdered uh and you know no one in the monarchy had the power to do anything because of like there was too much legal red tape or whatever and so that brought me down this path of like well what if you just had all the power and you didn't need to worry about the right like yeah they have to have a compelling idea to them but that's not like like that premise right there is enough you don't need to go any more complicated than that like you don't need to add any layers to that you know, you could start adding layers and be like, oh, and also the people who killed my family was my father. But also my father worships a death cult. And also the death cult's trying to control the world. It's like, no, we don't need all those layers. <laughs> you know, mm. yep. they just need that, that. They just need a compelling premise. Um, fucking. Um, ah, shit. Had an example idea. It just went out my brain. Oh, God, it was like that. Damn it. Some of the related to the, the idea of like the. Uh, all right, whatever. Anyway, doesn't matter. But yeah, they don't. They don't need to be. You also, also, just as a, as a slight aside to that one, um, your villain does not need to be morally gray to be interesting or compelling. It can yeah. just be straight up evil and still be compelling. Yeah. Like that is, it's yeah. still a doable I think, thing. I think me and Isaiah last time we did the villain episode, we both agreed that like the straight up like I'm evil characters just more fun to run as a dm it oh, can yeah. be just as I compelling mean, if not more so than the from you know. a yeah from a from a purely from a D D, just i want to play the game standpoint having a villain who's just straight up evil can often be fun because players just want to roll dice hit guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah it works yeah that's the funny thing about a lot of tabletop games is often the uh the very simple straightforward uh villain is just better and it's actually really hard to try and do the like complicated morally gray villain a yeah. lot of time you're better off not doing it <laughs> mm-hmm. just you know funny yeah. uh, Sam what about you uh villain cool thanks I missed that <laughs> uh, no, I, I, some villain I, I well I mean yeah some villains are like some villains suck bad i it, you can definitely also ruin a villain don't don't try too hard don't don't try to force a really good villain don't overthink it <laughs> yeah just don't thank you yeah that, that, that's the best way to say it. just don't overthink it yeah it's uh it's not it's not the end of the world if your villain is mediocre but it does suck when players don't like Sam, you just said mediocre, and all I could think of was the Morton Joe. <laughs> mediocre. <laughs> Actually, I think the Morton Joe, right? He's, just, he's fucking evil. Just evil. Yeah, he's, great. he's great. Just, just real loud, real evil. He's got a good aesthetic, and he has mm-hmm. wild things. You're just like, oh, great. I love this guy. Best, mm. best fucking Mad Max film across the board. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we should do an episode where we just look at like media villains and think about how you can reinterpret them for tabletop. Yeah, I thought of that for this episode too, but I'm like, eh, the guys probably won't go for that. Oh, but maybe, oh. maybe next time. Yeah, I'll, I'll be down. Got that All one right. down then, since I just said it. <laughs> All right. But uh, uh, Chloe, we closing out. 
and close closing out with uh yeah villain villain closing school. out these nuts oh got him got him, got him. Got him. Oh. <laughs> i ain't miss that yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah yeah and yeah, villains can be villains can be villains uh thank you everybody for watching watching listening listening, listening. you know One what day. i mean Using 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 the eyes attached to the sides of your head, not yeah, yeah, the your, eyes yes, in front yeah, of your, your head. Your, your ear eyes <laughs> using your ear hole yes, eyes. The eyes that you hear with. Yeah, your hearing eyes. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah those I love ones. my hearing yeah. eyes. Uh, uh, right? Just yeah, you yeah, thanks thanks for thanks for listening to another episode. Like Josh said, you know, don't forget to subscribe if you're listening to us on YouTube and uh, giving giving us giving us Ooh, some stars on Spotify. You know, if you, if you like some, you like the star system they have. Also, I apparently, we found out recently you can have comments now. So give uh, us a, give only us a on comment. mobile Spotify though. Only on mobile. Only Spotify. on mo mobile, which is really dumb. But yes, you can leave comments yeah. on Spotify if you are so yeah. interested and inclined to tell us why we're all retarded idiots, stupid poo poo heads. Uh, you mm -hmm. can leave that on Spotify now, or on YouTube, Stinky. whichever you like. Or yeah. you, or you could follow us on Twitter and tweet it straight at us. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that has been uh, this episode's Sessions Cancelled. Uh, have a good one. And now, yeah. for my Watch Jojo, number 15, Tiamat. Oh, did you just say Watch Jojo? He did, yes. Ah, uh, fuck. Watch Jojo. Fuck.